Yeah, that would be fine. And I, I suppose I would take uh, Gene and Christine and Baba's word that they watched it if they, once they've done so, if they just email me. Um, well, okay, so let's, let's, um, let's talk about this. And primarily what I want to do is just um, talk about the project. I'm going to share my yeah. screen for a second. Um, and this is the same PowerPoint that I attempted to or shared briefly when um, <clears throat> on the first Zoom session, but I've modified it a little bit now with some specific dates. due dates. And so, oh, my expectations, I mean, what are the deliverables and due dates? And, um, and, and I do have one really important point I want to make. So, and I would have loved to have, uh, I think you're, I think you with your business background, uh, 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 will understand where I'm coming from. Um, but I also want the rest of your team and especially the, your, the DMP students who, uh, um, might be fix, fixated on, 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 on their idea. Uh, to understand to uh, my point, what we're trying to learn how to do here. So I'll start here at the, the final presentation, just we'll work backwards. So okay. um, you see there the due date is December 15th. I think that's the Friday of finals week. And so what you'll actually, and you can, uh, you can uh, upload it sooner than that, but uh, what you'll actually be doing, the whole team will be doing, is uh, making a video presentation um, of their pitch deck. And that's a 10 to 12 slide format that um, we'll learn how to do, um, that we build to through the second half of the semester. So almost everything that we do here over the next eight weeks builds to this final presentation. Now, the presentation itself is one that you'll do you can do from a distance. I know you've got uh, teammates that are scattered. Yeah. So what I have teams do is they use Zoom, much like we're doing tonight, in which that you will be, all the members of the team will be um, pitching or presenting their slides. Uh, but the trick is that we use, in addition to Zoom, technology called uh, screencast software that allows you to make a uh, M- uh, peg video hopefully I'm saying that correctly yep um, using screencast software now there are different softwares that are available I think you can even do that within PowerPoint actually but I'm going to recommend to everybody and I'll share this information later that they use um, uh, or they consider using a an online tool called screencast-o-matic and it's this screencast software that allows you to make the video. Then you upload the video to YouTube, you make it unlisted, and then you invite me, and that's how I view it to assess it and, and provide you your final, your final score. Everything we do works towards that, but without question, the two most important assignments are those custom interviews, round one and round two. You can see they're actually occurring uh, this time next month. So. Mm -hmm. uh, do on November 3rd and November 10th, two rounds of interviews in which each team, each member of the team is required to interview one customer per round. So a total of two customers. And these interviews must be meaningful, which means you must be interviewing someone who's in your customer target segment. So, um, of course, the problem that you're working on is, is healthcare. <laughs> what we'd like to talk to are, um, uh, and I think specifically customers who are located rural, rurally who um, are seeking healthcare. Now, the trick here, and what I want to share with the entire team, you know, not just you, Stephen, because I think this is very important, is not to be at, at this point married 100% to your idea. So, what we are and you mentioned design thinking earlier. So this is design thinking. We're not focused on the solution yet. We're focused on a customer with a problem. And we're trying to determine what that problem is. And we're gonna let the interview process help us determine what the problem is, 
and then also guide us to the value proposition or the idea to solve the problem. So it's not idea first, it's actually customer first, assessing their problem through the interview process, and then having it lead us to, to a solution. We may end up exactly on the idea that, that Gene and Baba uh, presented was essentially, if I, if I recall correctly, uh, rural healthcare and probably using some type of technology. But initially, yeah. all we're really trying to do is assess the problem. Now, this can be a challenge because sometimes the problem's obvious, but what I'm really looking for, for from, from this process is really that design thinking mentality. Let's interview the customers, and through the interview, let's assess their pains, their needs, their daily jobs, and really get a complete picture of what this person's going through and then let that guide us to the value proposition. So the challenge of course is you have to be interviewing meaningful customers or, or yeah. have meaningful interviews, customers from your target segment. So, um, so a couple additional thoughts here. One, you may say, well, how are you going to conduct the interviews? The venture blocks simulation in week nine allows us to practice those interviews in a simulated environment. So we will learn in week nine how to do the customer interviews that we will do the following two weeks. Um, we'll learn, for example, what are good questions to ask, what are bad questions. And what we're looking for is insight. We really want these interviews to provide insight that leads to opportunity. And if it works really well, it can actually be a segue to something truly innovative, something truly new. So it's a very important we don't get married to our idea initially that we keep an open mind. Well, that's good because I know uh, <laughs> we, we met on Saturday and we were just chatting about what we were doing and sounds like um, there are very interested and more so it's not necessarily mental health care is kind of the overarching umbrella, but what they really kind of want to tackle is addiction or substance addiction, whether it be alcohol or drugs. And that's kind of the main thing they right. were looking at. Um, and so, which led me to a, a number of questions, including, uh, and so I don't know if we're going to be discussing this later, but uh, what kind of profit, is it dollars and cents profit you're looking for, economic profit? Uh, what is our kind of measurable goal that we need to be looking at? Um, well, anyway. the, 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 the parameters of the project I shared up front, um, uh, it, it, it can be uh, one of these, what I consider to be a hybrid business. We learn in chapter four, right? Mm -hmm. that, but that um, combine both a social mission um, with a profit mission. The point yeah. being is there has to be a part of the business that has profit as its motivation. We are providing a product or service. There's an exchange. We receive dollars. And we're motivated by, by making profits. Now, we can get very creative on what that looks like. Uh, uh, in one of the reflection assignments on Chapter 4, there's an article there I included about the company that um, their mission is basically uh, saving the national parks. Uh, they want to make sure that there's money available to keep the national parks in good repair and make improvements that need to be made. They're donating a lot of time and a lot of services in which profit's not the motive, but they have setting there fundamentally as part of the service. It's apparel company and the apparel company oh, is yeah. tied okay. to the mission and it is tied to the parks. They sell a t-shirt. They have profit as a motivation. What they're doing with that profit then is supporting the mission. So what I would say to you and the rest of your team, and this is very critical. I don't, what I don't want to see is just a not for profit created. Yeah, Which completely, yes. completely uh, dependent on government funds. But by the way, I don't think that's uh, a sustainable model because you never know when the government funds are going to dry up. And so yeah. if you're going to really think entrepreneurially, what you should be building in your model is good old fashioned capitalism and a profit motive, at least part of, of uh, the company. Okay. So now, I'm glad that you guys had a discussion about the ideas on Saturday. What you need to be doing right now, because it's due next week, next Sunday, I guess this Sunday, actually, the 13th, 
mm -hmm. is you need to pr provide a customer profile segment of every target yeah. customer. And I'm sorry, talking about that as well. So good. So hopefully you've read the PDF and you looked at the customer archetype. And if you did that, you also uh, hopefully found the reading on how to calculate your total area market. Yep, uh, in the book. That's, that's, yeah, that's the first step. So we're really saying, okay, I know who the customer is we're trying to help. I know how many of our customers are out there. So I can assess the opportunity. And then that then leads into the interviews of those customers and assessing their problem. Once we understand the problem, that leads us to the value proposition canvas due on the 17th there. The value proposition that we create, hopefully there's something new, novel, unique, creative about it um, that uh, we get excited about because mm -hmm. we've learned real insight from our customer interviews that then uh, we use to create the value proposition. Once we have the value proposition canvas done, we feel good about that. There's a third round of what I'd call research and potentially interviews. Now we're not focused on customers, we're more focused on potential partners, suppliers, uh, resource providers. We're really trying to get information on, okay, if we were going to provide this value proposition, we're assessing the resources that we'd need to, to provide that value proposition, and we are gonna have to do some additional research. For example, if this idea moves the direction of telemedicine, right? There would need to be someone on the team who researched, okay, we're gonna do telemedicine, what does that equipment look like? And, um, and that's important because that information then get put, gets put into the Performa Financial, where we can assess the financial feasibility of the idea. Uh, and there's information in all this and assigned reading, and so I'm going very quick, and it sounds like a lot. Oh yeah, no, I- Corresponding, even... corresponding with it is, is videos and, and resources to, to um, uh, go in more detail what's required. The, you may be the person that's tasked with the pro forma financial. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll, we'll be using a, a spreadsheet tool uh, that I've used with clients for 20 years. It may be something that you like and that you end up um, uh, using uh, going forward, which would be great. It's a great spreadsheet. Uh, now, we're not trying to produce a lender ready or investor ready performa. That's not the goal here. The goal here is really just to provide some definition to the project and assess the financial feasibility. Okay. Financial feasibility would be something that, okay, sometime in the next three years, we are projecting some profitability. Okay. Uh, once the performa financial is done, it's going to get real exciting because you will have a, a value. Hey, hello, Baba. You'll have hey, how are you doing? Good. You'll have a value proposition that uh, hopefully you're excited about, a performer financial that you feel good about, and then it's a matter of putting together the pitch deck uh, and, and making that final presentation. Uh, okay. So everything here is kind of uh, sequenced uh, in steps uh, that one leads to the next. So exa for example, we can't do customer interviews until we feel really good about our customer profile. Uh, we can't do the customer interviews until we've done the simulation. We understand how to conduct an interview. We can't do the value proposition canvas until we've had the customer interviews. Uh, once we have the value proposition canvas, we can move to the performance because now we know what the idea is, but we've got to do those resource interviews first. And then once we have the performance financial, we've got real definition of the project, we can do the pitch deck, and then we make our final presentation. So everything is linked yeah. and, and laid out uh, to build on uh, Just building each blocks. task. Yeah. Um, but once again, it's not idea first and then let's develop the idea. It's problem first and how do we solve the problem? Believe me, we have a problem right now. So it, it, right. it's almost too vast. And so that's kind of, I think one of the things is just going to, it's going to be good about the customer interviews is kind of narrowing down. Well, well, I gotta be honest with you. Sometimes the best thing to do is to get your, not to, if you if you've got, if you've identified a problem that's vast, Okay. Sometimes it's better and more powerful to say, okay, let's, let's make this, uh, 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 I mean, it's hard to grasp like a mass marketed idea. So let's, let's make this more small business friendly. Let's, let's niche. Let's look at a niche segment. Let's mm -hmm. look at a yeah. customer segment. That's a niche that's underserved mm -hmm. right now. 
that's narrowly defined. It's not everybody in the world. It's this group of people that has this problem. And, and that may be a good discussion for your team to have is let's really get uh, narrow on our customer segment because once you do that, and we can, we can describe customers demographically, psychographically, geographically, uh, there's a lot of different ways that we can really zero in on a niche segment. And that's really a lot of great ideas. That's how they start. They don't start trying to be in all things to all people. They start out, they identify a narrow niche segment of customers who have a very defined problem. Often it's an overlooked segment. They develop a value proposition that serves them intently. And then they build from there. Okay. So solving okay. something like mental health or the other idea, um, drug addic addiction, those both border on, in this country, uh, what you'd consider, based on chapter four, a wicked problem. There is no one solution, and the target's always moving. And so those can be very difficult ideas to develop. But if we say, okay, let's step back, and let's figure out a sub-segment that has the problem, that may be a way to approach it. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. okay um now the last thing that i'll say and i'm glad we got baba here on the phone and this is a slide from earlier as well so um although i have this is actually a reduced assignment list from what's in your syllabus and what we discussed in the first zoom session i removed uh the business model canvas assignment okay I did that intentionally because uh, I get the feedback about this class that it's too much work. And so um, I thought I would try this this semester, removing uh, the business model canvas. Even that being said, though, this is still going to take a team effort. So what is tasked, um, no one person can do. It's going to really take every team member contributing. And I always have at least one BU 630 team that kind of falls apart and one or two people end up doing all the work and we can't have that. So what's, what's key about that is, of course, organization, open communication, making sure there's discussions on what role everybody can play. So for example, Stephen, I'm completely fine with you taking a lead role on the performer financial, but the, if the expectation is that you're doing that without any input from your team members, that's incorrect. Okay, so everybody needs to be involved all along the way. And if there is a problem, you need to let me know because um, I want to make sure everybody's actively per participating. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, that's very important. I just want to you know, you know, reiterate that. Any questions? Uh, you know, I think for me, that was kind of the biggest thing was about the uh, profit and kind of what we're looking at and then the overarching uh, um, just the vastness of it. But I think after talking to you, I think it'll be good to go back to the team and talk to everybody and just kind of get our expectations down and then to really start working on that uh, customer profile. I think once we get that at least uh, mostly nailed down, I think that'll help us uh, in the direction we're gonna need to go from there. Right. Yeah. Great, great question just to say, who are we trying to help? Uh, just really focus in on whoever that is. That's okay. a good first step. Baba, did you have a question? No, I don't. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I think Stephen was recording this. You might, Baba, yep. go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and record you points, although you got on late. Uh, but I would advise that when Stephen shares the recording, you watch. Uh, okay. You missed out probably I just think on five minutes. You, you watch the beginning and make sure I went through the entire project process and what's important and how your team should be thinking or approaching it. Uh, kind of my expectations and uh, uh, how are things going? Are they going okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully you're, uh, hopefully you're enjoying the class. Uh, and uh, I get, with, with that, I don't have anything else to add guys. Okay. Uh, are you going to be posting that, uh, I guess, a PDF of that list of uh, dates and everything someplace? Oh, yeah, I could. Um, um, 
it's from the syllabus, but yeah, what I might do is I'll, what I think I'll do is I'll send out an email. Now that I've met with everybody, this is my last Zoom session and kind of shared it. I'll, uh, I'll send out an email, kind of a bulleted form with those deadlines and dates. Uh, so everybody has that as a reference. Yeah, that'd be great. Just yeah, kind of separate be. from the rest of the coursework and whatnot. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm going to jump off. All nice right. Well, thank you, you Professor. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Prof. Okay. Bye. All right. Hey, I'm going to stop the recording real quick before we go on.